Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Raina, this is Rainier Books. Sunday, a beautiful Sunday, 15, 16 degrees Celsius outside. Soon I will be leaving for a football game at Grimsta IP in the northwest of Stockholm. But now it's time for books, so let's talk about books, baby. About the books that I've read, that I've finished, and the books that I'm going to read in the next week. And here they are, I and I. I finished, uh, I finished three books in the last week and the first one was from Japan. It is a book that I had on my shelves for quite many months already without re actually reading it, but now I got to it, I listened to it and uh, enjoyed it widely, I can say. This is Sayaka Murata's short story collection called Life Ceremony. It was published in 2000, translated from the Japanese by Gini Tapley Takamori and published by Granta Books in London, England in 2022. This is a collection of 13 short stories, two of them a bit longer and some other shorter ones, of course. And it is what, what these short stories have in common is that they are very Japanese in a way that I have read many Japanese authors like uh, Joy Ogawa, for example, like Banana Yoshimoto and Sayaka Murata, of course, who have sort of a fable, a, um, an interest in the obscure, in the surreal that is sort of uh, permeating our everyday life or permeating the characters' everyday life in these stories. And let me just talk about Life Ceremony, which is uh, the title story. This is a story about uh, a future in which, I mean, Japan has this problem of undergrowth in population. Japan, I think, is the fastest, is uh, the country in the world that is growing older and older as the fastest. They have way too many deaths and way too few births, new births, to stay a younger country. So the Japanese society is aging rapidly. And this is, might be and is probably one of the reasons and one of the inspirations for Sayaka Murata to write her short story, Life Ceremony, in this collection. Life Ceremony is a funeral, actually. Funerals have been turned into a life ceremony, sort of, in this new future of Japan. The people who die, the beloved people, they have to be, well, cannibalism alert. They have to be cooked, they have to be made into a stew, and the funeral ceremony is sort of being replaced by a life ceremony for more and more people in Japan. And the main character, main characters are always women, what I like here, she has two life ceremonies to attend, and also connected to a life ceremony is the hope of those people who invite other people, the relatives, the friends and family, of someone who is deceased. The hope is always that on a life ceremony people will have sex and it's it's not a passionate sex, it's not a sex that is based on love or something like that. It's only based of the idea of getting babies. It's insemination that is interesting for the society in general. So you have the life ceremony where the deceased is being eaten by the morning and you hope that morning couples or even people who meet for the first or second third time at the funerals or at the life ceremonies will engage in insemination. You have other stories in this uh, collection like um, Eating the City, which is also a longer one, about 37, 47 pages in this um, little book. Eating the City is a story where you or the narrator realizes that or at least fantasizes about that every object is alive, that the sand is alive, the walls are alive, the doors, the people, and everything merges into one organism of the world, which is actually very scary and, and becomes very scary in this book. So Sayaka Murata, Life Ceremony, a very enjoyable uh, book, and as always with short story collections, some you will like more and some you will like less. I didn't like everything, but, but Life Ceremony is a stunner. And also the first story of that collection is called A First Rate Material, also about using the human body, the body of the deceased person to make furniture, to make um, accessories, to make jewelries. 
stuff like that, really creepy stuff here. But typically Japanese, if you compare it to authors like Ogawa and Yoshimoto. The second book that I want to talk about is the third book that I finished for the Women's Prize. You probably realize that I did not make a video about the International Booker for the one and only reason. For the one and only reason that I have not read books from the International Booker list. For another reason is that I haven't bought any of these and uh, Stockholm Library has this time not a single title of the 13 books in their, on their shelves yet. So I haven't read anything. I have watched some channels, some people who have read everything, some people who have read nothing, but give their comments. It's also nice. Sometimes I do that myself, so nobody's to blame here. Uh, the um, third book that I read from the Women's Prize long list, the Women's Prize will have a short list announced next week, and I will try to, to give a prediction for that because at least I have read um, about a quarter, a little less than a quarter of the long list. The third book that I read is Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crookson, and I very much love this beautiful English edition of the book. Look at this beautiful cover. Yellow is one of my favorite uh, colors, and then this uh, beautiful hat with its afro, and uh, yeah, I like it. And it, it throws us back in, in a little Jamaican way, I think, with the colors to uh, the 1970s and 1980s. The author Jacqueline Crookson says in the acknowledgements to this novel that she has been writing 16 years to finish that novel, 16 years. And it's about, it's a fictionalized account of Jacqueline Crook's, uh, Jacqueline Crook's um, youth years in uh, London, in Bristol and in Jamaica. These are the three places where the book is playing and the first part is this is our dancing time this is our dancing time it's full of music and I will have to speak about music and books in one of my future videos because this one is so full of music and the um, main character Yamaya she lives for music and for the life with her friends but then her life is changing she falls in love with a guy called Moose then her life will ultimately change and um, Things will happen that are not so good, but then she will look for her mother. There's a search for the mother that she never really met in her life. And it leads her back to Jamaica, where her family came from. And this is so much music. This is so much um, searching and uh, searching for identity, searching for belonging, that I really like this book very much. I will make a single review about it. No way that I would, would not do this. It... Um, has nice blurbs by Bernadine Evaristo, who says one to watch, and Caleb Zuma Nelson, who's out with a new novel very soon, I guess. He has said simply beautiful, and this is a beautiful book. And I also recommend the uh, playlist that the author, Jacqueline Crooks, has made on Spotify for this book. A lot of dub music to listen to. The third book is a German book, and I think I will make a German review also of this book, my first ever German review on this channel, in some kind of special edition, you could say. This is um, called Revanche, wie Putin das bedrohlichste Regime der Welt geschaffen hat, by Michael Thumann, or Michael Thumann, as you probably would call him in English. He is the foreign correspondent of the German newspaper Die Zeit, and um, has been a correspondent and still lives in Moscow for many, many years. I think he lived almost 20 years in Moscow. And in this book, he sort of says that, shows that um, as many tr people try to, to sort of um, put it, that not the West is responsible for the war in Ukraine. It's only Vladimir Putin who's responsible for this and his regime. And I translated with the help of the wonderful translating machine deeple.com on the internet. I translated a paragraph that I found very significant. And here's Michael Tuman, Mike Michael Tuman from this book, quote, The year 2022 brought the war back to Europe. It is the biggest quake since the Second World War and has profoundly changed the lives of Europeans. And we are only at the beginning. Putin's criminal war of aggression has robbed tens of thousands of Ukrainians of their lives torn the roof over the heads of millions and turned them into refugees. The European continent has been plunged into a deep economic crisis that no one knows when or where it will end. People will have to bear the consequences of this war for years to come. 
The causes do not lie in geopolitical great power competitions or capitalist speculative storms. One man and his supporters are to blame. They have invaded a neighboring country without need and without distress, but with imperial gestures, with terrible consequences for the whole world. And Michael Thumann in this book in, uh, I think, 12, 13 chapters, 15 chapters actually, is leading us. And if you haven't followed the history, the, the history of the last 20, 25 years with Russia and Europe that closely, then this book would help you a lot to do this and also delivers a lot of arguments and theses if you talk to people who support Putin and who support total totalitarianism in the West. There are lots of these people. It shows how German politicians made huge mistakes over the years by believing that uh, you could actually have a peaceful future with Putin by buying gas, by buying oil from Russia because it was cheap and how Putin inside the country has practiced with the war in Chechnya, has practiced to lead the country into a total dictatorship, which it now is. Last week, a Russian journalist was sentenced to 25 years of work, labor in a prison camp just for speaking his mind, 25 years. And Tuman's book ends with a notion, with a sentence that he is not knowing when this war will end. Nobody knows it. But one thing we know, he says in that book, the downfall of Putin's regime began with this war. Putin can now rely on only one thing. His prominent place in history is assured as the most bloodthirsty ruler of Russia since Josef Stalin. Um, very important, timely and readable book. Revanche by Michael Tuman. I disagree only in one point with him when he says that um, Russia is not a fascist country right now, because I think Russia is a fascist country. He defines this as new nationalism, but I agree with Yale professor of history, Timothy Snyder, who says that Russia surely is a fascist country today. I have started a fourth book. I am trying to read as much as possible and to listen as much as possible, thanks to audiobooks to what I have on my shelves, um, because I thought I listened away some of the books on my shelf. And what I'm listening to right now, and I'm really completely um, enchanted by this beautiful book from 2017, a winner of the Penn Faulkner Award. The award freaks among you will directly know which book I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about Behold the Dreamers by Mbulo Mbwe from the United States, a wonderful story of New York in 2007, just before the economic crisis, a beautiful couple, uh, immigrants from Cameroon named Jandy and Nenny from Cameroon who try to build up their lives, try to build honest lives, hardworking lives like so many immigrants in the US do. They uh, work together with a Lehman Brothers family, very rich white Americans who have a beautiful house in the Hamptons uh, called Craig and Cindy, I think Craig and Cindy. The Edwards family uh, is very powerful and privileged. And then things start to happen that sort of tear both families apart or endanger both families. The economic crisis of the Lehman Brothers. Uh, an application for asylum by Jen Day, which is refused and his future is certainly unsecure for, uh, for the next years and for his wonderful uh, little son and his pregnant wife. So beyond... Behold the Dreamers by Imbolo Bues, a great pleasure to listen to right now. Two more books I want to talk about. I have here, and, and I will try to read it. I will make my prediction of a shortlist for the Women's Prize shortly, and probably tomorrow. Uh, but uh, So I won't finish this book, I guess, because I got it only this week. This is Children of Paradise by Camilla Grudova, Canadian writer. And this is about uh, a cinema, and that is what's fascinating me. I know that there were mixed reviews on Booktube out there about this book, but I nevertheless, I like the idea because every chapter has the title of a very classical or more or less classical movie. It starts with quotations in the motto by La Chinoise, a movie that I saw actually by Jean-Luc Godard from 1967, and the last picture show by Peter Bogdanovich. It has cap the chapters are called like this one here, um, Midnight Cowboy, directed by John Schlesinger, 1969. So there's a story about a woman who starts to work at a cinema. I'm very curious for this one. And finally, 
Finally, it's time. Actually, now it's time. Now is the time to set things right. To read the winner of the National Book Award in 2022, The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gundy. It has been lying there so long on the shelves, and it's absolutely time to read it because it's a firecracker debut. It's dazzling, said the Sunday Times. I really want to read this, and I hope I finish this pretty, pretty soon. What I won't read. Simply because a lack of time right now, and I had to deliver it back to the library after 14 days, so I gave it up, is Afghanana by Osne Sajestad from Norway. Uh, Osne Sajestad. Uh, this is a book called The Afghans. It's also out in English. It's probably a very readable, very good book about uh, the life of Afghans after the Taliban took power again. Osne Sajestad, a Norwegian journalist and writer who returned to Afghanistan, I think, uh, one and a half years ago, to meet all these people and to write about how Afghanistan is like under the rule of the Taliban. And you have this AK-45 here lying on the table. So these are the books that I'm, write, that I'm writing. I should write a book, actually. The books that I've read and the books that I'm reading currently. And um, what are you doing? Are you satisfied with your reading? Do you have great reading time? Do you have great... What we do? Do you have great listening time as well? Are you listening to books? I really got to listen to books again, which makes me so happy because I had problems a couple of months and I wasn't listening at all. Right now I have a great uh, ebook problem because I don't read ebooks anymore, but I want to read The Futurist History of Masha Gessen. More about it one of these days. Thanks very much for today. Now I got to go to the football game. I see you soon. Bye.